Over the last year, I've struggled. I've struggled with my mental health. I've struggled with deadlines. I've struggled with my relationships and spending time with Chris and my family. It's not good for a person to slack on that stuff. And especially for me, who's very type A, to fall behind in any category of my life, it doesn't make me happy. I was really sad over the summer and feeling kind of lost. Maybe that's just because I put too much on my plate, probably is. My health suffered. I don't really go to the gym and going to the gym was one of the main reasons we moved into this condo because there's a gym literally just up a few floors. I never go. I'm not even gonna be like, I go once in a while. Like I never, I never go. Two minutes and 33 seconds. I literally have no excuse. That's a lot of the reason why I'm making this salad, to be honest. It's been hard for me to eat healthy because work has been number one priority. And then when you fall behind on work, you feel really guilty. But when you're doing really well at work, it usually means you're doing poorly in your social life. And then it's a, it's a vicious cycle. And so, do you, do you wanna know something? This is far too close to my face. I'm gonna have to fix this, hold on. Here's the situation. When you have too much on your plate, you're unhappy with what you're making, you're feeling like you're kind of failing in every department, what you need to do is get help. And when I realized I needed help in my business was not only when I was starting to feel like a failure and was crappy, it was when there were all these things I wanted to do with my business that I just didn't have time to do, that were just sitting there, written down, and were not becoming a reality. They were not coming to fruition. I started to write down down all of the little things that I needed done and kind of keeping a tally of things that didn't 100% need my attention so that I could delegate them to somebody else. There's a lot to let go when you realize that. You have to acknowledge the fact that you're not the best at everything. If you want to do the best job that you can, it means getting somebody else to help you do it. There were a lot of great ideas that I think are I have so many great ideas that like I really think I should do. I have a lot of different things I wanna start and a lot of concepts for videos that I think people are really going to enjoy. So I wanna, to, I wanna make them. As the control freak that I am, it's hard to let other people do your work because you always think that you can do a better job than they can. Maybe that's true. It doesn't really matter because you're still not getting the thing done that you were supposed to get done. A big portion of what I wanna talk about is about hiring and being a manager, but if some of you aren't 100% at that stage yet, I do also wanna talk about some of the little things that you can outsource and get other people to do for you that won't cost you very much and will still, it'll just make your business better. The first thing let's tackle is hiring employees part-time, full-time, managing those people, how that works. I'm still learning. Basically what happened this past year is, this is actually a couple years ago. Chris and I started to realize, okay, we're definitely handling too much. It's not working. I've said that like eight times in this video. I, it was a long process, okay? And we thought, what's the very first thing we need help with? Editing. So we got some freelance editors. Okay, when we're traveling, you know, we are really not on top of client emails. Who else? else can we get to help us with that? So we hired a part-time producer. These weren't necessarily full-time positions we're bringing people on for, they're contracts. So on the one hand, are they going to be available all the time? No, but can it be our job to plan ahead enough to make sure that we can account for that? Yes. We had a intern come in this summer and she came in a couple times a week after her internship was over. She was so great. We were like, what are we going to do without her? Why don't we just have her come in one day a week and just see what happens? I'm sure we can find stuff for her to do because every day that she comes in, even these few times a week, we find something for her to do. So that's what we did for our production company. So the cost investment is really low. With a lot of different investments in your life, like buying your first home or buying your first car, they're really scary because it seems like a lot of money at first, but very, 
very quickly, you just start to realize that it's really not that big of a deal and you just account for it and you, you build it into your budgets work-wise. In terms of our social media brands, Chris brought on uh, an editor and at first he brought the editor on part-time. And so again, we're bringing all these people on part-time to see how it works and to see whether we can manage it financially. And so that worked out and now Chris has this editor coming in a few times a week. So my business in terms of this lovely YouTube channel, my brand, my social media thing, I hired an assistant. And right now I have actually two people who are helping me out, which has been super awesome so far. And again, that's very new. I'm thinking into 2020, how can I make my channel better? My YouTube channel that we are on right now. And one thing I really want to do is post more content. So I want one video every week for you guys, but I would also love, you know, occasionally a second video a week. And I think that would be awesome because not only can you guys visit me here more often, but I have more opportunity to interact with you guys and give you more value and information that you're looking for. Because with one video a week, I can only go through four topics a month, which isn't really a ton. That's like answering one question. So I thought, what better way to really bring you into what it's like to run a video production company right now out of our home, working with my fiance and having my own business that I'm running as well. So after realizing you need help, hiring is the first step and I would totally recommend bringing someone on super part-time first to seeing how not only your relationship with that person works and whether it's a good fit, really to make sure that you can afford it. And maybe you can, maybe you can bring them on two days a week, three days a week and you're getting so much more done you can bring on more work what comes with hiring is being a good manager that's something that I'm learning to do be right now that's probably one of the most daunting things to have to accomplish when you've never been a manager before and that doesn't change whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're a manager working somewhere else to have to be a boss and make sure you're everything's getting done but you also don't want to really be mean and you want people to stay and work with you for a long time and develop cool company culture and good relationships with the people you're working with so that you all feel like you're a part of growing this really cool business and you want your employees to enjoy what they're working on too. There are a lot of resources that you can look up online, articles, I'm sure there are courses, there are books you can read about how to be a good manager, but my personal opinion and my own experience would be for you to reflect what it's like to be an employee yourself. That means the most important part of being a manager is empathy. So understanding what it's like to be an employee and what your employees are looking for. And if you were an employee in the past, what were you looking for? How did you want to feel going into work? And what kind of relationship did you want with your boss? What is going to make someone stay working in your business, loving what they're doing and do really good work for you? Usually it's when they feel some kind of ownership in your business or they're really enjoying the work they're doing. So I give them a lot of ownership in the projects they're working on. For example, we just hired a podcast producer. Her name is Holly and she was actually one of the trip attendees for our Azores course in April or May 2019. We had her over one day and we said, look, we need someone to manage everything podcast related. Take it. This is your baby. This is your case study. It'll only be as successful as you make it. We'll do whatever you tell us to do but this is your job now and she ran with it and she's doing an incredible job because we're telling everybody that it's Holly Holly is our podcast producer so she's really proud of it and she has full creative control over that I mean she and I are working together but I'm asking her what are your ideas what do you think where do you want to see this go do you have any creative ideas for the patreon or for little things we can do in the episodes what do you think would make it better there are also a few books I would recommend for you guys to read that'll just help you you declutter your mind and help reinforce that sense of empathy. Let me get them. The subtle art of not giving a fudge. The confidence code. Why do all book titles swear now? How to get shit done. Get your shit together. The seven decisions. And there's one more called The Moment of Lift that I think all of you should read. It's by Melinda Gates. I will also link them in the description below. 
For those of you who aren't totally ready to hire someone yet, I get it. It's really daunting. You don't want to be responsible for that, but there are a couple things that you need done. I still have a solution for you. There are websites like Fiverr. Fiverr is sponsoring today's video. I've used them a lot for logo design, so that's one of the things you could outsource on this website. It's super affordable, super fast turnaround. In addition to making awesome logos, Fiverr offers tons of stuff. To name just a few, they make WordPress sites, SEO for you, digital marketing, writing, so if you need some blog posts done, if you need social media copy, voice actors, like it's endless. Video and animation, you can get a whiteboard or animated explainer done if you're like, oh my God, I have this video due and I just can't get it done and you need to outsource an entire video project. There are people on Fiverr that will do this for you for a very reasonable price. I'm looking at their website now and there's some stuff on here that is new and I didn't even know about it. They do podcast editing. I will edit your podcast episodes in 48 hours and it's $6.89 Canadian. Thank you Fiverr for sponsoring this video. If you guys want to check out Fiverr, link in the description box below. The sooner you realize that you're not the best at everything and stop being a control freak, like I look myself in the mirror and I go, Elizabeth, stop controlling. The sooner you realize that, the better your work will get, the faster your business will grow, you will be a happier human, you will live a more balanced life. I now can eat more salads, I just have to learn how to make them. And maybe I'll get up to the gym sometime soon. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a like down below, subscribe if you're not already, and hit the bell to get notified when I post new videos. Don't forget, Fiverr in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> I'm <laughs>